So we're going to create an update. And we're also going to create a private vector 3 for target rotation. Just like so. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the input view that we're getting from the input actions. It's just a vector two to modify this target rotation and then set our pivots rotation to this target rotation. That should be nice and easy. We'll go ahead and give it a go. So first things first, we're going to say our target rotation. Uh, actually, let's create a reference to input rotation. Uh, no, just uh, view input equals, and then we want to grab the player controller dot input and the view. So that is this variable here. We're grabbing the value of that, and we're going to use that. So what we'll do is target rotation dot x, which is up and down on the camera. If we have a look inside Unity here, go to our camera controller, and we change the position of x. You can see it moves the camera up and down. So what we want to attach to that is our y-axis input. So moving the mouse up and down. So what we'll do is we'll just say uh, just plus equals, and then we'll just do view input dot y times time dot delta time. Okay, the reason we use time dot delta time is because we use an update and we don't want to do this every frame because people are running lower frames will obviously, um, this will get called less and etc. Um, I'm not going to go over that in too much detail. To be honest, the best thing to do is to read the Unity documentation. It'll be able to explain it a lot better than me. Okay, so now we got the X set. What we're going to do next is we have to set our transform dot rotation to our target rotation. Now that's going to error mainly because this is stored in a quaternion. This is now a vector three. Um, so the way around this is to convert this from a quaternion, uh, from a vector three to a quaternion, and that's quite simple. You just do quaternion I don't really know how to pronounce that. And then hand in your vector three. Okay, so let's give this a go. See how this looks. So, um, should be able to look up and down now. There we go. I can't tell whether that's inverted or not, so um, we'll have a play with that. So first things first is we need to times this by our sensitivity. So I'm just going to cut that, add in some brackets and paste it back in. I'm going to add times and then we'll access our settings dot sensitivity and we're on the Y axis. Nice and easy. And you're probably wondering why I put these in brackets. That's because of our whole input, uh, input invert system. I'll come back to that in a minute. So now we'll just go ahead and make sure that that's all okay. Should be a lot more sensitive, which it is. And we can go ahead and look around. So we will be adding a, um, a clamp to that. So you can't go ahead and look up your character skirt. Uh, okay, so what we'll do now is we'll just do the inverts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that. Actually, wait, no, I'm going to get rid of time.delta time for now. And I'm going to try and explain this as I go along. So I'm going to add an inline condition, which is basically an inline if statement. So we'll do settings dot uh, inverted y. So you do your condition. Obviously this is a boolean, so it's a condition in itself. Then you end up with a question mark. So I'm saying if this is true or false, and then you do your first value, so zero, and then your false, your else value, so one, and then uh, you're done. So 
what we'll do is we'll obviously replace that 0 and 1 with the values we want. So it's going to be the same, just like that, except one of these values we need to flip it. So you can either times it by minus 1 or just throw a minus in the front of it. Okay, so this bit of code now will either give us this or this, depending on this. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> just remember this. <laughs> okay, so, and then what I want to do is I want to put that in brackets and just put a times time dot delta time. So whatever value we get from this, we'll just times that by time dot delta time. So I'm going to go ahead and just double check that that's working before we replicate it on the other axis. Okay, so this is where I get confused. I think this is inverted, I believe. Uh, when I move the mouse down, the camera goes up. I'm not 100% sure. And then if I tick the inverted Y, it's the other way around. So that's set up perfect, except I don't know which way around it's supposed to be. If you want to switch it, just change the minus to the other value, like so. And I'm going to leave that like that for now. And then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to do the same thing for the... So we want to rotate on the Y and we want to use our X axis. I'm just going to change all these Y's to X's. Nice and simple. And then what we'll do from this point is check that the invert is working. So now it's on the other axis. Okay, so I move the mouse left and it goes right. I think that's inverted, so I'm just going to switch that minus round again. There we go. Okay, and then hit play now. And just make sure it's on the right um, axis. Okay. That's better. And then if we change invert x. Yeah, that's definitely changed. Okay. So that's nice and simple. I'm going to grab a drink quick and then we'll look into clamping our X. Should be nice and simple. Okay, so now we need to add a clamp to stop people from looking up your skirt and um, staring at the floor or behind. I don't, you know what I mean. So what we need to do is we need to clamp this value here. So it's actually quite easy to do a clamp. Um, we'll just do it after we set the value. We'll clamp it here. So we need to say... Um, our target rotation x equals and then our value after the clamp. So we'll use mathf.clamp as we're trying to clamp two floats. And then it's the value you want to clamp and then you want the min and max. So I'm just going to go for testing purposes minus 40 and 40. Let me go ahead and check that that works. Should just work straight out of the box. Okay, so we're clamped. If you have a look here on the right, you'll be able to see. So we're clamped at 40 and negative 40. Okay, so I'm actually going to put those settings inside our model here, inside our camera settings. So we'll do public float clamp. Uh, we'll go Y clamp, if we can spell it, clamp uh, min. We'll give it a default value of minus 40 and then F just to um, signal it's a flight. I know you usually only need to do that when you do decimals, but it's a good habit to get into. And then we'll also do a max and we'll make that positive 40 F. Okay, so going back to our camera controller now, we need to use those. So instead of the values here, we'll use settings dot clamp min. And obviously, clamp max. There we go. Nice and clean. And uh, we'll just go through and check that that has worked. Um, okay, so firstly, what I want to do is I want to set it to something more like minus 70 and 70. So I'll check that that works. 
or is that that's way too much and okay that's that much we'll just go we'll just go 60 and 50. Okay, right, I'll say that that's, that's clamped enough. Okay, all right, so that's the uh, mouse movement. Um, so uh, that was part two. So in the next tutorial, uh, what we'll do is we'll actually make it so it rotates the player, uh, the capsule. Um, when I'm aiming in. So we're going to go for a kind of GTA style movement where the player can just run around and if I hold aim or the player is looking at something, the player will face that direction and use uh, root motion to strafe and walk instead. So we'll get that set up and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial.